Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my review of the ZWO ASI 071 MC Color Cooled USB 3 Astrophotography Camera. Before we start, just let me say that ZWO did not provide this camera to me for review. Uh, I purchased it with my own money earlier in the year, so any comments and thoughts are purely my own. So let's start by uh, let's have a look at what you get in the box. Well, first of all, you get the uh, ZWO branded pouch which is a protective case, um, great for storing the camera when it's not in use. There's certainly a fair bit of protection around the edges of there and at the top and the bottom. Um, for those in the UK, no, we haven't had the, the greatest of weather in the recent months, so unfortunately it's been spending a lot of time in this case at the moment. Um, there is a very small and thin uh, ZWA generic ASI camera manual, uh, which comes with all their cameras. It's the same one, it's not specific to this model. Um, just covers driver setup, basic um, configurations that you may want to use and some troubleshooting. There are two adapters which are provided. One is a 16 millimeter, 16.5 millimeter M42, M48 adapter and then a 21 millimeter M42 adapter. So those are made out of aluminium. I'll just put them back together. There is a small pack of shims. So there is a one millimeter and I believe a half millimeter shim in here, which are made out of some nylon plastic. So if you want to get those sort of final micro adjustments, uh, provided those, um, with a nice touch. And there is a USB 3 data cable. Um, you'll notice it's the flat type, which they do have started providing. So it makes your image, uh, your, sorry, your cable management a little bit easier. Um, there's also two USB 2 cables, which I don't have with me on the table provided. And finally, there is an Allen key, which I'll describe what that is used for later on. And of course, we have the camera. So the camera, as soon as you take it out of uh, its pouch when it comes out of the box, you'll notice the distinctive ZWO aluminium red casing, which looks really nice. I think they... Uh, the colour, I, I just find it really nice to look at. You can also tell as well when you take it out of the box, the build quality is excellent. Um, there's no loose bits, there's no bits that you think, oh, is that gonna snap off? There's very little plastic on there. I mean, these grills are plastic, but that's probably because they need to be. Um, it just feels overall uh, a great build in terms of quality. Um, you'll notice that the camera is quite uh, deep. Um, so most of the sensor is here. This is mainly a void, and then there's some electronics at the back here where we've got the fans and the inputs. And I'll go through why there's this void here. Um, it's also quite heavy. Um, it's 500 grams, so it's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, this is a cooled camera. So I originally shot with a Canon 5D Mark III DSLR standard camera, no modifications, and uh, that was great. And then I'm, I decided I wanted to go into um, sort of dedicated astrophotography camera and looked at various things that were, were available and chose on ZWO um, from their reputation and branding. Um, did lots of research. I ended up choosing this camera. And one of the reasons is, is, is because it is a cooled camera. And what does that mean? Well, it means that the CMOS sensor, which is the part of the camera which captures the light photons, can be cooled down to negative temperatures. Why do we want to do that? Well, when we take long exposure astrophotography images, the longer the exposure, the hotter the CMOS sensor gets. So when you're doing say one, two, three, four, five plus minute exposures, the sensor will get hotter and hotter. And as it gets hotter, the more noise is introduced into the final image. And that noise, you can only do so much in post-processing to try and eliminate it and smooth it out. So if you can start with a an image uh, a noiseless image, and not fully noiseless, but a, a, certainly a, a great reduction in noise, then your image quality is just going to be overall better. And that's what this can achieve using the tech cooling system that's uh, embedded in the camera. So through software, I can basically set this camera to be minus 10 degrees, minus 5 degrees, and the, the tech cooler will attempt to cool the sensor down and keep it at that temperature during the night. The manufacturers rate it up to, I think, minus 30 degrees below ambient temperature. So be aware that if the temperature outside is 19 degrees already, then you don't just go down to minus 30. Also, you wouldn't just pick the lowest temperature you can achieve anyway, because that can have negative impacts because it will require quite a lot of power to achieve that. 
and also I've uh, seen some people comment that past minus 15 or minus 20 the re the actual improvement in the noise it reduces it by sort of falls off the cliff you don't get that much more noise reduction whereas between sort of minus 5 and minus 15 I've certainly found those to be the the best temperatures for, uh, for my situation I live in the UK so um, we don't get really really cold weather uh, it's with minus two a couple of weeks ago we do we do occasionally drop down to minus five and minus eight and that's sort of temperature in, in in the winter and in the summer we were up at sort of uh, late at night it was 19 18 degrees something like that so um, I decided to cool it down to minus five from minus uh, from 19 and in the summer and then a few weeks ago when it was minus two I took it down to minus 15. I sure I think it can go further uh, but I'm, I'm happy with the results that those provided. And that's what comes on to us this void here. Um, the tech cooling system is effectively here behind the sensor and then there is a fan here at the back. A tech plate works by getting one side of the plate warm and the other side of the plate cool when it passes a voltage through it. So the warm side of the plate has to be kept a little bit cool as well and that's what this fan is basically there to do. And these vents also allow that air to escape out. So let's talk about the, the rear of the camera and the inputs. So we have a USB 3 cable input here. So this is what connects to your PC, laptop, ASI Air, whatever you're using to capture your images. Um, You'll notice there are two USB 2 ports. These are effectively a USB 2 hub. So that's great if you're connecting another device such as a focuser or a guide camera. Uh, it means that you can still have just one cable from this camera back to your imaging machine and plug your uh, other devices into here and they will still be seen by your, your, your PC or your MacBook. So nice little feature to have a two port hub on the back. And then finally, we've got a 12 volt, three amp input for power. So this camera has to be powered if you want to use the cooling system. If you don't provide cooling, it gets enough power through the, three, uh, the USB 3 port to basically fire up the camera and do imaging, but you won't get any of the cooling. So I would definitely recommend uh, providing a good quality 12 volt, three amp power supply into here. Okay, the front of the camera, we have a protective cover, which unscrews. And there is a rubber seal around that camera, which I'm going to presume is to try and eliminate dust uh, more than just it being screwed in. Nice little touch. And then we have the, the sensor itself. So you'll notice it's quite a large sensor. It's actually an APS-C size sensor, 16 megapixels, uh, 4,944 by 3,284 in terms of uh, the image size. The pixel size is 4.78 microns, so uh, that's a quite, a, quite a, a smallish pixel size. We also have uh, a 28.4 millimeter sensor from diagonal. So what you do need to make sure is that your imaging circle on your scope or lens is sufficient enough to cover that because it, 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 APS-C sensors uh, generally are um, large in, in, their, in their nature. It uses a Sony IMX071 CMOS sensor, which is found in some mid-tie and Nikon cameras. Really nice sensor, uh, got some um, good reputation on the images it can capture. Obviously, you, you need to make sure your optics are good as well, but if you pair this with a really good scope, you're gonna get some really good pictures. Um, the back focus, so from the front to where the actual sensor lives, is 17.5 millimeters. So when you're working out your back focus distance from your flattener or your scope or your lens, uh, you need to take into account the 17.5 millimeters already in there. Uh, and then finally behind here, there is an internal dew heater. Um, I know some of the early ZDRIO cameras, I'm not sure if it's just in this particular range or across, um, they used to get frosting on the sensor due to the cooling that was going on. So they introduced an internal dew heater. You can actually buy an external dew heater, and I don't mean for lenses, I mean for it actually sits around here and gets power from some external power. This model has it built in and it can be controlled through software, uh, turn it on or off. Some people I've seen reported issues with it. So even when they've got frosting on the sensor, um, the dew heater hasn't been sufficient. I've never experienced this. 
even when it was cold a couple of weeks ago here in the UK, I was imaging outside and um, I've had no no problems. And I always turn the GU heater on. I did in the summer. I've done it in the winter so far, and I've had no issues whatsoever with the sensor frosting over at all. Um, so let's put this cover back on. In terms of support for software, there are native ASI drivers available. So if your software program of choice, whether that be APT or Maxim or Sequence Generator Pro supports ZWO native cameras, it will use this. Uh, and if it doesn't, ZWO provide ASCOM drivers. So you will be able to use it with just about any piece of astrophotography software. Um, I've certainly used it with SharpCap, APT, and Sequence Generator Pro with no issues. And in fact, the latest version of APT um, has native ZWO driver support built in, so you don't have to um, use ASCOM. Uh, it's entirely up to you, probably personal preference. I think there's some advantages with using the native drivers if it supports it. Um, so let's take a look at some images that I've taken this year with this camera. Uh, do bear in mind, I only have a DSLR lens. I, I currently do not own a telescope. So I use a Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary lens. And at the moment, I'm really happy with the results I've got from this camera with that lens. I probably will look at something um, next year in terms of getting a scope. Uh, should I have enough money to, to do that? Um, so yeah, let's have a look at some of these pictures. Okay, you'll notice that the pictures are all in colour and that's not because I have uh, done anything special to them, really. Um, they have been post-processed, obviously, but I um, bought this camera originally because uh, I, I come from a DSLR background and I did eye up whether or not to go down a mono and a filter wheel route, um, but decided to stick with a, a colour camera. And this is what this camera is, it's a colour camera. So it shoots in a Bayer matrix, which is RGGB. So every pixel is made up of a red, green, green and blue um, image. Some people think that you can't shoot narrowband images with one shot colour cameras. That's not true. So in the last year and a half, um, there has been some great filters released that are specifically for one shot colours, namely the STC Duo narrowband. There's an Optolong tri-band one. Um, and those work great with this camera to bring out those hydrogen alpha and oxygen uh, emission nebulas. Yes, it's not as good as a mono camera with filters. It never will be. Um, but I'm certainly happy with the images that I've taken so far. Overall, really happy with, with this camera that I bought. Really happy with the images that I've managed to attain. I've had touch wood, no problems at all with the camera from a technical from an operational, from it just not working one day to it, just had no issues. And I think uh, overall, um, I would recommend this camera to anybody starting off in astrophotography. Yes, it's quite expensive, um, but if, especially if you're using uh, DSR lenses, it's a great fit for that. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like the, vi and like the video uh, if you liked it. I'm hoping to do some more astrophotography videos very shortly. So uh, clear skies and I will catch you next time. Bye bye.